Welcome to Organizing an Energy Treasure Hunt, Part 1, Introduction, Overview, and Principles. This video is the first in a four-part training series to help you host your own energy treasure hunt. We'll begin Part 1 with an introduction to the energy treasure hunt concept and background. Next, Part 2 and 3 will cover how to prepare for your energy treasure hunt, including engaging leadership, building technical teams, and defining data and tools. Finally, Part 4 will cover what is involved in executing your own energy treasure hunt event, including pre-training, hosting the event, and follow-up. Energy treasure hunts are two to three day events that typically look at both non-production and production days to identify no and low cost energy saving opportunities. The treasure hunt invests heavily in the idea that your on-site employees are the key to unlocking day-to-day -day operational savings, meaning the energy treasure hunt really focuses on engaging and training employees. And we can't emphasize enough how well the energy treasure hunt can get your whole team thinking about ways to improve energy performance. Another outcome of the energy treasure hunt is a facility action plan, and this is where results and findings get incorporated into a plan that will guide implementation of the energy saving measures. Finally, the energy treasure hunt will establish who is responsible for implementation. Without an agreement on who needs to follow up after the energy treasure hunt, identified improvements may never get completed, and you don't save any energy on opportunities that are not implemented. Generally, energy treasure hunts address several key questions. Where? how and how much energy is used by the site or sites, how can energy use be reduced, and what is the plan for reducing and who shares responsibility to implement saving measures. The treasure hunt concept was started in North America by Toyota. It's based in traditional Kaizen principles, and Kaizen means good change, and these principles were adapted to a style that could work in all of Toyota's plants in North America and eventually throughout regions across the world. Toyota shared this successful methodology with other Energy Star partners and also the Energy Star program who took note of its effectiveness in engaging plants to be instruments of energy efficiency, which is why the Energy Star program promotes treasure hunts as a best practice today, because they really are an effective way to engage plants and develop good teams fortified by the power of the people who are regularly on the plant floor. Everything we talk about in today's training can be found in the Energy Treasure Hunt Guide. The guide is a companion to this training, which you can refer back to for instructions for each step of the process. In fact, it's the best tool to guide you through the process in a way that's cost-effective for you. For inspiration, the guide includes success stories from the originator of this concept, Toyota, and from a few other Energy Star partners that have adopted the approach and adapted it to fit their own corporate situations. These companies include Haynes Brands, Merck, Cal Portland, and the Intertape Polymer Group. The guide is available on the Energy Star website at energystar.gov forward slash treasure hunt. Energy treasure hunts have many benefits, including one that you'll notice we focus on quite a bit, which is motivating employees to identify no and low cost opportunities. Other benefits include developing employees' energy knowledge, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and another wonderful outcome of the process is that employees gain a sense of ownership uh, for opportunities to save energy, ownership in how the building performs, and all of this can lead to continuous savings in the long term. So here are three examples of companies that have used the treasure hunt concept. As you can see, they've all had really good results, and this statistic isn't shown on this slide, but they've had an average payback of about six months after energy saving actions were taken. These companies' energy programs have engaged nearly a thousand employees in the treasure hunt process, so know that you're not going at it alone here. As we've mentioned, one of the principles of the treasure hunt is engaging employees to leverage their excitement and knowledge for more successful outcomes. Another benefit of the treasure hunt is the impression given by its name. There are power in these words, right? Because which would you prefer, going on a treasure hunt to find energy saving opportunities or being on the receiving end of an audit or an assessment to find problems? So audits can have a very negative connotation while treasure hunts engender a sense of excitement and adventure. So one of our partners likes to say that it's a treasure hunt, not a witch hunt. So how we frame the pursuit of energy efficiency is very important. And energy treasure hunts can be a whole lot of fun. We've seen teams get really creative with pirate-based themes for these treasure hunts, and we encourage you to make them fun. There's nothing like seeing management running around the building in, in a pirate costume to lighten the mood. All right, so let's talk about energy treasure hunt principles. 
So the first principle, first and foremost, energy treasure hunts save energy and money by controlling operational costs and using energy more efficiently. An energy treasure hunt is a tool that supports the advancement of an overall energy strategy, like the one you'll find in the Energy Star program's Guidelines for Energy Management. The second principle of treasure hunts is that they're designed to support energy program development at the plant level. So the third principle of the treasure hunt is that they assist in finding opportunities in these four areas, which are the focus of most energy management programs. So these include uh, opportunities for small capital projects, for example, lighting upgrades, large capital projects, for example, building renovations, procurement opportunities, uh, opportunities to renegotiate the utility supply contract, for example, and then finally operations, so improving use of existing equipment. And this is where an energy treasure hunt focuses uh, on these operational opportunities, many of which will be low cost or no cost efficiency improvements. So this table shows three methods for identifying energy opportunities and the differences between them. All of these routes can be useful, but the treasure hunt makes a good starting point, which is to focus on the low hanging fruit, the no and low cost operational improvements. The primary focus of a treasure hunt is how do I take what I already have and make it more efficient? And this is where the knowledge and skill of your internal staff really drives the treasure hunt because no one knows the day-to-day -day operations like they do, and this familiarity provides the focus needed to identify those operational improvements. Energy treasure hunts are also a good place to consider retro commissioning. The treasure hunt itself is not retro commissioning, but you might use the treasure hunt process to determine whether retro commissioning is needed. Okay, so here are some examples of low-cost ideas that you might identify through treasure hunts. As you can see from the examples, they include turning off equipment when not needed, resetting temperatures, components running at a greater demand than necessary. All of these are low-cost or no-cost energy reduction opportunities. Finally, the fourth principle of the energy treasure hunt is that they support continuous improvement through optimization, teamwork, ownership, and repetition. The idea of ownership, this is really important. So an ineffective energy efficiency strategy would be to alienate your employees and your building engineers by excluding them from the process. And that can happen sometimes with energy audits conducted by third parties. Now, bringing third parties into your energy management program can be very helpful. But for the energy treasure hunt, you want to use it to engender a sense of responsibility for solutions. You want employees to know you appreciate what they do, and you want them to feel like an integral part of the success of the program because they are. So employees then become an important part of a cycle of plan, do, check, and act, which is a management process to support continuous improvement and to support an energy program at the plant So level. as you move forward, you can use the principles that we've talked about to sell energy management and the energy treasure hunt to your organization. Also, energy treasure hunts are not just for energy. The process can be copied for other sustainability focus areas like water, waste, and recycling. Okay, so this concludes the first of our four-part series about the energy treasure hunt. Please join us for part two, which discusses preparation, engaging leadership, and building teams. Thank you.